Many thanks for asking me to give this talk entitled The Stem Cell Story. And I'll be honest with you, as a practicing hand and peripheral nerve surgeon, my knowledge of stem cells and stem cell research is limited. But patient awareness is ever increasing. Regularly I'm asked in the clinic when faced with a difficult problem such as degenerative joint disease in a young patient, chronic tendinopathy that's resistant to treatment, severe nerve injury or traumatic tissue loss. What about stem cells? When I completed my medical school training, stem cell research was still in its infancy and the clinical applications of stem cell research were centred around the treatment of lymphoproliferative disorders and genetically determined hemopoietic disorders with bone marrow stem cells. There has been an exponential growth in our understanding of stem cell biology and potential clinical applications during the last three decades, including new sources of stem cells, cellular gene manipulation to generate pluripotent stem cell lines from mature adult cells, and new targets for therapy that are limited only by human imagination. I hope this talk will act as an introduction to this complex subject and very much look forward to hearing the presentations from the experts in this field over the course of this session. The image shown is for an art exhibition in Ontario in 2011 with artistic interpretations of stem cell research. Art has long been used to provide a visual representation of that which is difficult for a lay person to understand. The book of Genesis described how God created Adam from dust in his own image and Michelangelo depicted the creation of Adam and the creation of Eve on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel between 1508 and 1512. Eve was created as a companion using Adam's rib while he was sleeping. Orthopaedic surgeons might tell you that this is the first account of a bone graft. The word rib was translated from the Hebrew sailor, which has many meaning, meanings, including side. The creation of an individual from the tissues of another was a fanciful idea. This ethereal account of creation in scripture was used to define something that otherwise couldn't be rationally explained or understood, something that required faith or a complete trust in something based on spiritual conviction rather than on proof. In Greek mythology, the birth of Athena is depicted from the skull of Zeus. Human embryo and stem cell research has made the seemingly impossible possible. The Hindu goddess Durga is often depicted with many arms demonstrating her formidable powers. Religious icons are brought closer to reality with scientific advances. And start doing their thing. The salamander so is known for its ability to generate a new limb thing. following injury. So if you take some injury is usually coupled with an thing. inflammatory response, so macrophage ingestion of debris followed by fibroblast so pro proliferation and, and activation, fibrous so tissue formation some, and then cicatrization. And doing their thing. In the so salamander, some, stem cells are able to regenerate new, thing. mature, so functional some, composite tissues without a scar. Thing. So this process some, of regeneration is exciting and has a multitude so of applications some, if only it could be harvested and controlled. So if you generation some, of functioning tissues when hereditary so conditions some, lead to deficiency, like-for-like -like replacement so of injured some, tissues following injury or disease, rejuvenation of the aging body. A short history of stem cell research. In 1908 the term stem cell was first used by a Russian histologist. He postulated the existence of hemopoietic stem cells. He suggested that there existed a stem or branch from which other mature cells could develop. In the 1960s, Joseph Altman and Gopas Dahl present evidence of adult neurogenesis within the brain. And by 1963, McCulloch and Till in Canada had demonstrated self-renewing cells in mouse bone marrow which formed new colonies when injected into the spleen. By 1968, the first successful bone marrow transplantation had been undertaken between siblings. By 1978, hemopoietic stem cells were isolated from the umbilical cord. And by 1981, mouse embryonic stem cells were isolated from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst by Evans, Kaufman and Martin. The term the embryonic stem cell was coined. Now stem cells exhibit key characteristics, totipotency, pluripotency, oligopotency, unipotency and indefinite self-renewal. There are two main 
groups of stem cells, embryonic and adult. Embryonic stem cells are derived from the blastocyst or from fetal tissue and they exhibit true totipotency or multipotency. There are ethical considerations for research and for clinical use. It may be possible to reduce their immunogenicity uh, through techniques such as somatic nuclear transfer. Uh, but it is felt that poten potentially continuing problems of rejection may be related to donor mitochondrial DNA and generally when using stem cells immunosuppression is required with its attendant complications. Following fertilization the fertilized egg divides and forms a cluster of totipotent embryonic stem cells that is termed the morula. This is because of its berry-like appearance. Approximately 10 further cycles of division result in a hollow structure. This hollow structure is known as a blastocyst. Different gene expression and spatial orientation define the cell characteristics further. The outer cells lose their totipotency and form placental tissues. The inner cell mass maintains pluripotency. And these inner cells are capable of forming any tissues endoneural, mesoderm, endoderm, mesoderm or ectodermal tissue within the adult. The early stem cell researchers used these pluripotent embryonic stem cells capable of indefinite self-renewal to create cell lines that could be manipulated to differentiate into multiple cell lines for further evaluation. Next, adult stem cells. Most of the cells in the human body are differentiated into mature cell types hair, muscle, bone, bone marrow, intestine However, a small number of specialised cells exist within some of the body tissues and these are known as stem cells. They are less differentiated cells and are capable of self-renewal and differentiation into a wide range of mature cell types or lineages. Stem cells have a role in replenishing natural cell loss such as in the blood, skin and intestine. Hemopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow are capable of differentiating into all the mature blood cell types through genetic and local physicochemical influences. In the small intestine, stem cells are contained within crypts at the base of the villi. Cells lost from the tip of these villi are replaced and self-renewal replenishes the stem cell colonies. The ability to harvest these cells and to culture them and then to influence the division and differentiation offers amazing possibilities for treating disease or replacing lost or damaged tissues. So adult stem cells are naturally occurring for regeneration or repair. They have a pluripotent potential rather than the two true totipotency of the embryonic stem cells. However, because they're taken from host, there is no possibility of immunogenicity and therefore no rejection. Ultimately, these patients treated with adult stem cells would not need immunosuppression. And there are fewer ethical considerations related to their use. Adult stem cells can be derived from a number of tissues, such as the bone marrow derived stem cell, or more recently the discovered adipose derived stem cells. But they've also been isolated from other tissues, such as dental pulp and peripheral blood. Embryonic type adult stem cells have been found in the Wharton's jelly of the umbilical cord, also isolated from umbilical cord blood, from amniotic fluid and from the fetal membranes. And true adult stem cells have now been created using induced pluripotency such as taking mature adult skin cells or olfactory mucosa or fibroblasts manipulating them to de-differentiate these cells and create indefinite self-renewal. The stem cell story has accelerated. In India, Mataperka described the processes for organ regeneration and filed numerous patents. Subsequent research has centred on regeneration of fallopian tubes and on the bladder. 
The 1990s saw advances in human embryonic stem cell research with the creation of cell lines that have been patented. But the increasing controversy surrounding stem cell research raised public and relig religious objection. Political pressures resulted in changing stances and eventually the US Congress passed relevant legislation. New discoveries of potential sources of adult stem cells have created less controversial avenues for research. By 2006, more than 50,000 bone marrow transplants were performed annually, so this technique had become a mainstream medical technology. Further sources of stem cells were identified and the ability to create stem cells from mature skin cells in mice created even more possibilities. The technique of somatic nuclear transfer offered the possibility of creating bespoke stem cells for adult recipients to enable treatments without immunosuppression. Donor mitochondrial DNA may still be a potential trigger for rejection. In 2008, tracheal transplantation with cellular deplete donor and recipient stem cells was undertaken. And Professor Macchiarini, now Professor of Regenerative Medicine at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, was the first to use this technique. Initially a cadaveric cell deplete, uh, trachea was colonised with stem cells. Uh, later, by 2010, the first child was operated on with stem cell treated trachea derived from a cadaver. By 2011, a synthetic tr trachea with stem cells had been implanted into an adult patient. And in 2013, a child survived for two months following implantation of a synthetic trachea with bone marrow derived stem cells. By 2012, the trial was underway, treating diabetes with cord blood derived stem cells, and this showed it improved C peptide levels, reduced AB, HbA1c, and reduced median daily insulin requirements in diabetics. By 2013, the technique of 3D printing of living human embryonic stem cells onto a matrix had been developed, which created great possibilities for future creation of structural tissues. And in the news recently, in August 2013, human skin-derived heart precursor stem cells were used to populate a mouse cell-depleted heart create over the structure and making Doris a Taylor fully formed Texas human heart, heart had created a beating cell but there's something even more astonishing about how the cells behave human stem cells which were injected into this matrix a heartbeat also in 2013 the 300,000 dollar google burger the Google founder had funded lab-grown bovine skeletal muscle stem cells which were mechanically loaded in culture and it was postulated that this could potentially be a way of creating food and dealing with future food shortages. So what are the current research areas that are relevant to our practice? Well, neurological research is centering on regeneration in the central nervous system dealing with degenerative conditions such as Alzheimer's or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also dealing with spinal cord injury, but it offers great potential in peripheral nerve injury. Orthopedic research areas are on cartilage regeneration and creation of biological joint replacements, and also on creation of bone. Controversies still exist. The ethics surrounding embryonic stem cell research are still not fully explored. There's also a risk of tumorigenesis from de-differentiated cells which have potential for indefinite self-renewal. There's a worry about creating designer babies and also the prevention of aging. So in summary, stem cells have pluripotent potential and permanent self-renewal. Adult stem cells occur naturally and they replace aging and damaged cells. Adult mature cells can have induced pluripotency and cells can be readily harvested and grown in culture without the risk of rejection and fewer ethical considerations than experimentation with fetal stem cells. Regeneration offers a great potential for repair of damaged tissues without scar. 
and there still is the possibility in the future of organ regeneration to replace transplantation. Many thanks for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of stem cells and stem cell research.